Is claw grip bad for your hand if you're a PC or console player? We're going to answer that today, as well as talk about Gaming Mod Kit's new joystick controller. What are our thoughts as esports medical professionals? What we're going to be doing today is, as I said, we're going to go over the biomechanics of this new keyboard joystick. And for those of you guys that don't know what it is, I'm just going to show you guys a little video. Yes. Um, so let me transition mm -hmm. that. Boom. Here's the video. Wow. Unboxing. We're unboxing here. <laughs> okay. So, um, basically with, right. so, so you, why don't you tell us what, what you know about this? Yeah. So it's actually another peripheral and it adds a joystick that you can use with your left hand to the keyboard. So you can see he's unboxing it and it looks pretty standard, but it actually, it, uh, it can attach to the keyboard and it lets you do all your WASD movement with a joystick as opposed to your fingers. So then that opens up some interesting possibilities where your movement can be a lot smoother and then you can actually have a lot more key binds for your fingers because they don't have to use WASD anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It does have a built-in wrist rest, which you can see here. Uh, it's, it's not too bad, but realistically we want to make sure that it works for you as opposed to against you so if we skip ahead a little bit more matt yes then we, sir. Can see... we can see how he actually yep. uses it right in a game like exactly Fortnite. so boom exactly yeah and it is a pretty slick piece of slick piece of hardware and yeah. you can see here cool. that we we want to think about ergonomics as especially for the hand you want the middle finger to line up with your elbow and you can see here it's not too too bad he is a little bit into what we would call radial deviation here I'm moving and over a little bit yeah yeah so you can and radial deviation is when he's more like this and that puts more pressure on this side of the wrist and it can also give you some issues here and especially it's not too bad in this in this shot but he his fingers are a little bit into what we would call hyper extension and that's mm -hmm. what they look like from from here. I'll give See, you a there we go. snapshot. Here's a here's another view yeah. of what we we mean mm -hmm. by that. Yeah, basically hyperextension is when you lift your fingers away from your palm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So exactly. we'll we'll show you actually right some of our thoughts that we have mm -hmm. specific to this. So as you guys can see here, yeah, we have these pictures. And um, John, why don't you talk through what your your thoughts are with yes. this? So I, I like his positioning a lot more in the lower picture. You can see that on the top picture, his fingers are actually really, really raised away from the keyboard, which means that he's having to strain to really get that range. And what that, the problem with that is, is muscles like to be at a certain length to function at their best. And when your fingers are raised up that much, you don't really have much more left to go as far as range goes, which makes it difficult to actually move and it puts more pressure on the structures involved too so that's likely because at least from this angle it looks like he's trying to rest his hand on the hand rest there and yeah, yeah, yeah. really trying to use it yeah exactly trying to get that transverse distal arch onto it but when he's floating it it actually looks a lot better so in the lower picture you can see that he's not trying to strain and get onto the hand rest and his fingers actually look a lot more relaxed his, his radial deviation actually looks better too. And so I, I don't think this peripheral is bad or, or negative in any sense. You just have to make sure that you're still thinking of the right ergonomic principles and really making sure that your thumb, especially because you're going to be using that a lot more, it's in a really good condition. So for example, when you're using a keyboard, the motion is really flexion and what we call abduction, which is this movement. So it's moving this way and this way. Whereas with the key with the joystick, now you suddenly you're moving it in every direction. So now you're making you're also doing extension, which is this motion here when you bring your thumb away from your palm, and as well when you bring your your thumb like this towards your palm like that. And you can see the graphic that Matt has up here. So instead of just using those two planes to move it, now we're adding two more, and that is obviously more work for the thumb to have to go through those motions and you have to make sure that your thumb is ready for it because we haven't seen any injuries yet but we expect to see some that are very similar to our console players like melee or or other fighting games so 
What does that all that mean? It means that you can use this key, this joystick keyboard and probably do very very well, but you have to make sure that your thumb is ready for the extra stress that you're putting it through. So, why don't we show you what we what we think would be very helpful? So, an easy one is the adductor stretch. So you can make a nice L, and you can see actually some of the muscles that Matt's putting up. But here, you make a nice L with your thumb, and you just pull it down. Make sure you're avoiding any sharp pain with all these movements. Aim for about a 30 second hold, do it three rounds, and you want to do these stretches after you've done some activity with your hands, either gaming or typing, any of that stuff. Then it's called thumb in the hole, so you actually put your thumb in your palm like this. Grab thumb in the hole! <laughs> and then you just bring it down. Thumb in the hole! You feel a nice stretch through here. If someone isn't screaming thumb in the hole, you're not doing the stretch properly, so make sure that's you you have that happening. And then finally, the wrist extension stretch. So you just pull the thumb back. So I'm actually pulling it this way. Yep. Yep. Towards my face. Towards and you should feel face. a nice stretch through here. Then, Matt's going to show you all the strength ones. So the first one all right, the is... The first one is... What? The stress ball or ulti grip squeeze. Boom, we got a stress ball. Looking like a little egg over here. And yep. what you can do is you're trying to strengthen your thumb, right? In flexion. You yep. can also strengthen it in adduction, going in towards the rest of your fingers. So you can put it in between, holding it, bringing it back, holding it, bringing it back. Then you can put it more at the center so you can work on flexion, bending it, mm -hmm. holding it, bringing it back, bending yep. it, holding it. And then, if you have an ulti grip, one of these, you can also do flexion here, right? Yep. Boom. Flexion. And, and don't do worry, it. chat. We are going to get to your questions in a bit once we Boom. once you finish talking through our material. So stick around and we'll get there. Don't and you worry. you can also do thumb circles, right? Because when you're using mm -hmm. that joystick on the left side, you're going to be moving your thumb in every direction, right? So you can draw all mm -hmm. these big circles so you begin to develop the endurance and appropriate control yeah. to be able to use it for extended periods of time, right? So yeah. um, Jonathan did a great job helping you guys realize that, you know, even though we are shifting to begin to use our thumb a lot more in terms of directions right let me just go back to the drawing here yes um if it you if you guys see the red is is the more movements that we're going to be doing i mean we're, we're using abduction as well oh well we're using abduction as well for the keyboard joystick whereas the purple is what you we normally use just by pressing the space bar because we're just pushing it down Right, so it's you can while it's uh, easy to say that you're kind of doubling in terms of movement overall you can just think that there's more overall movements we have to consider mm -hmm. which means that there's more muscles that we have to consider that we're using and if our muscles aren't strong enough or have enough endurance then guess what you're gonna get irritated your uh, your tendons your muscles uh, at your thumb and around your thumb and even at the, your wrist are gonna get irritated and you're gonna feel some pain so if you guys are planning to get this joystick, you need to do those stretches that Jonathan, Jonathan showed. You need to do the exercises, the strength exercises that I showed. Anything else that they need to take away from understanding the keyboard joystick? What do you think? I think you can definitely use it. I think it's really important to also I'll have all the strength in place, but also make sure your hand's in a good position while you're using it. So. Like we, talk, we were talking about, you want your fingers to be more relaxed, not really raised up like this. I think, yeah, there we go. Like this, you want them to be more relaxed and making sure your wrist isn't bent either this way or this way. And if you're keeping all those principles in mind, then you're in a good place. Don't be afraid to, to try new things, but just make sure that you're prepared for it. That's all. That's right, that's right. All right. Hope you guys learned a lot with that one because now we're going to move on to question number two and that is claw, right? This is yeah. what we get asked all the time and I've answered it quite a few times on stream before but I think here it is guys. This is the 
this is the final time, right? This is the final time. I'm just gonna <laughs> get in my gym, get ready to work, yeah. work out this problem for you guys, so you guys can really understand why Claw is not necessarily arthritic. That's right. I'm talking exactly. to you, guy. I'm not your buddy, this guy. Um, so we're, it's not necessarily bad in the bigger picture when compared to other grip styles. Okay, so let's break it down. Let's get into the anatomy. Let's get into the physiology. Um, here we go. Let's start with the mouse grip. All right. You guys know and have seen this many times before. We have the palm, we have the claw, we have the fingertip. And in general, the palm and claw are similar in that they have increased contact with the mouse. And that means they have a certain amount of control. But the main difference that you guys can see on this drawing is, hey, of course, in the claw grip, the fingers are elevated like this, and then the palm grip, they're flattened. In general, fingertip is actually a lot more straining because there's less overall contact with the base of your palm on the mouse, which means you have to pick up the weight of the mouse with the muscles that control your fingertips or moving your fingertips down and your thumb in. Uh, so we're actually, we don't need to talk too much about fingertip. In general, that's more straining, uh, but I do want to compare claw and palm, okay? And uh, what I want to help you guys understand is with the mouse, ooh, 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 ooh. with the mouse, when we use the claw, what happens? Right? There's these three joints at our fingers over here. Um, there's also three muscles that control different ones. Right? There's a muscle that bends at the knuckle here. So A, you can think of it as bending A. We call this the lumbrical. We'll just say L. And then there's a muscle that bends over here. We call this. We'll call this uh, FDS because it's a long name. It's called it's flexor digitorum superficialis, but we'll just call this F FS then FS, and then we'll call this one bending that little fingertip over here at your distal joint. We'll call this FP. Okay, so those are the three movement and three muscles. And when you're using the claw grip, you're using more of your FS and FP. When you're using the palm grip, you're using more of your L or lumbricals. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys. They're in terms of anatomy, they're based in different parts of your hand. FS and FP start here in the forearm, whereas L starts here in the hand. And if we do somewhat of a analysis into where the stress goes i've made this beautiful little table here for you guys to see let's assume that in one game of i don't know fortnite you're clicking a thousand times okay and you're using the palm grip and i i just created this distribution of of use 70 30 just to represent that hey palm grip tends to use your lumbricals or the smaller muscles more than your FDS, FTP muscles, right? So you'll see that I've said, hey, 70% L, 30% FDS, FTP. For the claw, we're just going to use the opposite, right? Just to represent again, you use the F FDS, FTP more for the claw um, compared to the L. And if we calculate it out per action, that means, hey, in the palm grip, you're using those small muscles a lot more right than your your larger muscles the fds fdp so the lumbar core has to do 700 whereas the fds fdp does 300 and then vice versa for the claw so what we're thinking here is that if we just compare the difference between the two claw will use those bigger muscles isn't that surprising? Claw will use the muscles in your forearm. But those muscles tend to get irritated or those tendons tend to get irritated more in a lot of the gamers that we treat. Right? When you, people use palm, even if they use claw too, you are definitely using the smaller muscles of the hand. But uh, we almost never see pain develop deep in the hand over here. 
really it's very very rare and the, and the reason why is if we look at the anatomy there's a lot more circulation in that area right we can we can compare the actual anatomy right which area which has more artery supply that helps with uh, recovery boom you have all of this in the hand versus mm -hmm. you know just a few artery arteries that supply some of the muscles in the anterior form so um, that might mean who knows if it's a direct relationship there but it might mean that the forearm muscles might fatigue a little more quickly in the claw grip that leads to you know a potential uh, risk of irritating those tendons which is you know definitely what we see um, in the actual uh, when we are treating gamers and that pain is typically at the wrist it's never in the hand so hey you can say that claw might overuse this area more or might use these muscles more but because they're larger muscles they can also handle a lot more in term in terms of stress compared to the smaller muscles of our hand right so there's that kind of mini trade-off you can think about hey this is a bigger muscle it's being subject to more stress during claw but during the palm there's more circulation and they're smaller even though they have less uh, tolerance to stress they recover more quickly so mm -hmm. hey which one is really better or which one is really more of an injury risk and I would say what we're doing right now is we're zooming in we're zooming all the way in right we're zooming into the big picture whereas we're only looking at the ergonomics right we're only looking at this piece of the pie whereas guess what in esports health the entire piece of the pie con considers your physical conditioning, considers your lifestyle and habits, right? So you need to have the conditioning to support the amount of actions that you're doing in game. So hopefully you guys can see, we've often focused so much on these small details in this stupid small piece of pie. Whereas if we just paid attention to 80% of the pie with how much we condition our wrists. If we stretch, we allow for more recovery. If we take more breaks at appropriate times, anchor it through our day, then we don't even have to worry. We can use whatever grip that we want. It doesn't matter if you use claw or palm. And even though, yes, it might be more strenuous on the larger muscle of your forearm, so what? I have the endurance to handle 10 hours of gaming. It doesn't matter that I'm overusing my FTS and FTP. Okay, so. Hopefully that settles that debate for the claw. And if there's anyone here that doesn't agree, I'm always happen, happy to, to help you understand a little more or clarify uh, anything that I might mean. I know there was a lot of biomechanics and uh, anatomy and physiology there that might not have been directly clear. But now let's move on to the claw grip, right? The claw grip on your controller and mm. you can see the claw grip what's the difference what do you guys think is the difference here we in the standard you're using the thumb for all these buttons right thumb for all these buttons and then for the claw you're using thumb for half index for half thumb for half index for half you guys seeing where i'm going with this right thumb for half <laughs> index for half all right the difference in movements that we make, right? As I described before in the in John's section, when we use a thumb a lot, we're doing all these four movements and we're straining the muscles of our hand on both sides, right? We have muscles on both sides of our thumb. Here, we have muscles here, we have muscles here that control our thumb doing all those motions. And then we also have the, the tiny muscles in our hand here that move into abduction and adduction which means that it moves to allow you to press your button with the index finger here, right? You're moving it closer to the, the Y, the X, the whatever, all these buttons on the side. And again, guess what guys? I have my little calculation table here, right? Cause we're all about math. We're all about having some evidence to support this. This is just an example. Again, if we assume in one game of melee that it takes a hundred, there's a hundred actions. And I'm just gonna delete this, delete, delete delete if there's a hundred <laughs> actions 
And in the standard, guess what? These five buttons, one, two, three, four, five, you're using all thumb. Correct? Yes, correct. Good. Um, and then for, right, these buttons. For the claw, maybe you're using C stick and B for your thumb, and then these three with your, your index finger. So let's say we just create a random distribution for both situations. For YXA, 60. For B and C stick, 40. If we, the physical consequences for standard, whoa, thumb, thumb has to work pretty hard here. It's no wonder why people get a lot of thumb pain, right? And then for club grip, they might not, right? They might not deal with a lot of thumb pain because it's split into the interossei or those smaller muscles here. So is claw grip worse for you? What do you guys think? What do you think, John? Is it worse? Well, I mean, if you just look at the numbers, you might think one thing, but realistically, it's not. It's claw grip is totally fine, but you have to make sure that your conditioning can handle this extra force you're putting through your through your joints and your muscles. That's exactly, it. Exactly. Exactly. Right. We always need to yeah. zoom out. Zoom out. Mm -hmm. Stop looking at this tiny piece of the pie. Everyone's always so focused. Oh my god, sensitivity. Oh, DPI. Yeah. Oh. Hold on. I need I need to have the actual reaction of myself. Oh my god, <laughs> DPI. Oh. Who cares? All right, look at the bigger picture here. Pay it. Yeah. Use your effort in the things that matter more. Exactly. Choose the DPI that allows you to perform well. Right? If if you can perform well with lower sense lower DPI, then use it. But just make sure you have the appropriate physical conditioning, you take enough breaks yeah. to support that. Alright? So boom! Myth busted. Myth is busted. Um and mm -hmm. you know, hopefully you guys have a better understanding of why this discussion or argument of claw grip is Oh my god, this is one worse than the other. It's just a small piece of the entire pie. You need to think big picture. You need to zoom out and realize there are other things mm -hmm. that um, I can do to ensure that I have better overall health. All right, guys, that was all. Remember, you can always check our Patreon if you need some individualized help. If you want us to help you with injuries, with exercise, with nutrition, we have coaching for that. So check out our Patreon. You also get access to this patron-specific Q&A where we host this every single month. Don't forget, guys, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys soon.